Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, and we're getting back to work today. We're getting back on the road. So I'm getting myself ready. I'm gonna have a shower, gather all my stuff together, get it to the truck. Most of the stuff we brought to the truck yesterday already. Just got a few things like my computer and my backpack and stuff. With all my valuables, I keep those with me. I'm gonna get those to the truck, and we're gonna head out to the yard to get our trailer, which is already preloaded, waiting for us. It's going to Saskatoon. It'll be about a, a nine hour drive from there, once we're hooked up. So I'm gonna get myself ready and hit the road. We're getting everything ready to go, making sure that those leaks that we had fixed over this period of time are indeed still fixed. Everything is looking good. So let's get her fired up, get her outside. Let's go get our load and hit the road. Well, there's not too many trailers in the yard today. Well, I guess everybody's working, that's good, that's good. So here's the load I just hooked onto. Just got here, super easy. My uncle Rudy actually uh, brought this in from Wisconsin, so he gave me a heads up. We had a family gathering this weekend, uh, and I saw him there, and he gave me a heads up. Super easy to tie down, so that's the load. It is windows down kind of weather, finally. Turning on to uh, the perimeter highway south of Winnipeg, headed west. We're gonna go around the city, hook up at the Trans Canada, take that all the way through Regina up to Saskatoon, stopping in Brandon for fuel. That's the cheapest fuel on my route. Petro Pass, Brandon. Dollar thirty-two a liter into Saskatchewan. We're looking at paying about a dollar forty-four per liter. We're still on our fuel tax holiday in Manitoba from our new provincial government. We will take advantage of that as long as they will allow us to. over there on the right. The wind seems to be coming from the west, so it looks like we'll be fighting the wind all day. Fantastic. That's great. Quiet, you. But we're still gonna make it a good day. I mean, look at it. Sun's shining. It is 18 degrees Celsius outside. We're looking like high 50s of Fahrenheit, I bet. On our way to summer. Before you know it, these trees are gonna be green. The trees in our backyard are budding already. So within a couple of weeks, they're gonna be green. Usually by May. In our territory up here in Manitoba, uh, usually May is the time uh, when things start to get green and June is the really big green month So I know the saying goes April showers bring May flowers. Well up here in Manitoba. We're a little further north up here. It's sort of uh, May showers bring June flowers Flying J here just to grab some food. 
I'm gonna fuel in Brandon. It's cheaper, seven cents a liter cheaper in Brandon at Petro Pass for me on my card with my discounts. So we will be headed over that way. That's crazy. The pump price with no discounts is $1.70 a liter per gallon. I, I, per liter, pardon me, per liter. And there's 3.75 liters in a US gallon. Ho! Oh! Taxes, taxes, man. $1.69.9, just nuts. Actually, no, I'm not grabbing fuel. I was about to go to the fuel islands. <laughs> have it, have it. I'm gonna park right over here. Uh, yeah, I'll park right here beside uh, this blue truck. Actually, no, that's reserved parking. Uh, you know, I could probably park in reserved parking during the day. No one would say anything, but nah. Nah, I'm gonna set a good example, right? You know what's gonna happen next. Someone's gonna roll in here, they're gonna take a picture of my truck and say, Trucker Josh, you're in reserve parking, Trucker Josh. I'm telling the world, I'm not supposed to park there. In 400 meters, make a U-turn if possible and then turn left into 170 meters. Oh, Karen, you'd be the first one to out me. I know it. Gotta be careful. around this massive pothole that they put a cone inside of. It's that big. And uh, you know what? I am going to pull right in here. These parking spots are not really made for super bees like this, but where else are they supposed to park, right? In 200 meters, slight left on, Camp Manitou Road. They're longer than regular units, so they take up so much space, but they have nowhere else to park. I hope I don't get stuck in here. There's another one there just in front of us, those empty ones. His rear end is hanging out into the lane there, so it'd be tough for people to get out. But again, what are they supposed to do, right? These truck stops are designed, well, it's an American owned truck stop, right? So they're designed and the parking spaces are designed for American units 75 foot units here in canada though we have super bees which are longer and longer than that we have pikes which are 253 foot trailers behind a full length tractor yet so really long units we have up here that's the one criticism i do have of flying j it's still my favorite spot to park and, and to or it's my favorite spot to stop not necessarily to park because of this reason but yeah the parking spots are designed but you can't how, how else are you gonna do it right you can't have everything if you make these bigger spots for these longer trucks, you know what's gonna happen. Guys with regular length trucks are gonna go and plug up all those spots, and then when they show up at night, they won't have any spots. You know how it goes out here. Flying Jays are still by far my favorite place to stop. So that's, there's nothing we can really do about it. All we can do is complain, right? We're allowed to, co complaining is free. They're gonna tax that eventually yet though, so just watch yourself. Eventually there's gonna be a complaining tax. <laughs> That tarp. <laughs> well, the top is tarped. That's good. <laughs> Maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. Who am I to judge? Let's get out of Headingley. Let's go. Let's go to Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. See what our friends to the west are up to. Our prairie brothers and sisters. They always forget that we exist here in southern Manitoba, but. We don't forget they exist. Manitoba is a unique province in Canada though. Like Winnipeg South is a completely different province than Winnipeg North. Or I'd say like a hundred miles north of Winnipeg. It's about the same, but once you pass that into Northern Ontario, it's a completely different place. Very remote. Not much going on up in northern Manitoba. I mean, we have lots of resources up there. We could really dig into those if we would just allow ourselves to. We could be a rich province. We got the port in Churchill. We could get our goods directly to market. Like, great, we could build this huge port in Churchill and get our Manitoba goods directly into the ocean, directly to trade. We don't have to go through the entire country and go through Montreal 
or Halifax or Vancouver. We, we, we have access to the ocean, the Hudson's Bay. So Manitoba had a lot of potential. Just, it seems like we all sort of got the same attitude, same thing, same thing as me. You know, it's quiet here and we like that. We like it, it's quiet, flyover country. Everybody flies over us and forgets about us and we're okay with that. Once you start getting in the spotlight, you get a bunch of riffraff moving in, right? <laughs> Once people find out, hey, there's money there. You know, the criminals like to come and do their criminal thing. What am I talking about? I don't know. Don't listen to me. I'm bad. I'm excited to be back on the road again. I have 500 miles to go today. And it's going to be fun. Every single last one of them. About 120 miles is Brandon. That's where we're going to get our fuel. Here we are in Brandon, Manitoba on the west side. Second biggest city. Approaching destination in 100 meters on the left side. Second largest city in Manitoba. Steinbeck is the third. Okay, bud. You wait you to have arrived at your destination on the left side, 210 Highland Avenue. He waved to say thank you, but I didn't stop. To be courteous, I stopped because he came and blocked the whole driveway, but whatever, I'll take it. You're welcome. It's too bad it's raining here right now. Ugh. We're gonna get the little wet. And the main pump is on the other side. Did I come in here backwards? Can I come into the pumps backwards? Is there such a thing as backwards here? Did you guys see a sign that said exit? These Canadian truck stops, like these card locks, it's not really a truck stop, it's a card lock. Very often, it doesn't matter which direction you come from. It's Other truck stops will like give you arrows and guidance that all traffic should come in from this way, but you'll still have a few trucks here and there that'll come in the wrong way even with all the arrows. But here they, they have no arrows. I am genuinely confused. Do I come in? I'm thinking, I'm overthinking this. I'm just gonna fuel, whatever. Whatever, whatever. That's the, the, the model for right now, whatever. There's no one else here, it's just me. All right, two more trucks came in just now and they all, they both came in the opposite direction that I came in, so I felt silly. I turn, I'm turning around so that I'm facing the correct direction. I don't want to be that guy parked in the pumps backwards. Following the crowd here. There. I feel better. So as soon as I turned around, two other guys came in from the direction I was facing originally. Sort of, <laughs> I was just overthinking it. Like I said, it doesn't matter which way you come in apparently. All right, I gotta put my fuel card away. So we paid a dollar thirty-two point two cents a liter here, which is way cheaper than just over the border into Saskatchewan. And uh, I filled up for four hundred and thirty-five liters, and it was seven cents a liter cheaper here for me than my price at Flying J and Headingley. So we'll do the math together real quick before I get out of here. There's nobody waiting around me and no seven cents per 435 liters. I saved $30 and 45 cents by fueling here instead of there. If I would have fueled the same amount when I was there, obviously I traveled a little further, so you get it. Turn left in 130 meters. All right, back at it, back at it, back on the road. We'll probably stop in Balgoni Baloney, or pardon me, Balgoni, Saskatchewan. We'll uh, stop 
up there for a coffee, I think. I think by that time it'll be uh, it'll be time. Got one more car coming from my left, and then we can go get back on Trans Canada. kilometers to go that's six hours of driving a little bit over a little more than six hours of driving continue on this road for 355 kilometers so what would that be 360 miles somewhere in there related in Canada is by the mile. I've been thinking of changing Karen's language over here to miles instead of kilometers. You know, I always had it on kilometers because that's how like, I'm Canadian. So I, I, I think in metric for some things and I think in imperial for other things. But it would make sense to switch her over to miles an hour or miles anyways, I think, right? Because we all get paid by the mile usually. I get paid percentage. But everything else that has to do with trucking and trucker, like, rates and everything usually you, you usually focus on rate per mile not rate per kilometer nobody cares what the load pays per kilometer everyone wants to know what does the load pay per mile and there's nobody in Canada who gets paid by the kilometer as far as I know you don't get you don't get paid like you get paid by the mile if that's how you're gonna get paid so maybe it's time to move her over to miles because when I do my calculations on my end, in my spreadsheets, to figure out my average income, I always do it per mile. Like what my average dollar per mile rate is.
Mattoon, north side of town. Pulling into the Flying J, my delivery tomorrow is literally just right here around the corner. In 700 feet, turn left on Segments Avenue and Met. Approaching destination on the left side in 750 feet. I guess you've already noticed now, it's official. I've changed Karen over to US standard. She talks miles and feet now. See how I like that. Hope I can find a parking spot here because this would be very convenient. Dude, you're in the middle of the driveway. I need space too. Come on, man. There we go. Moving over. Okay. This place is usually Approaching packed. Approaching destination in 500 feet on the left side. find something. I would park here on the left and turn around but there's a fire hydrant there and you don't want to block that. You have arrived at your destination on the left side. Flight J Travel Plaza. Oh man, it looks packed. Well, if it is packed here, then I'll go to Husky down the road. It's a little further away, but... Every year, these truck stops in Canada just keep getting more and more full, like overflowing full, and they're not building new ones fast enough. I've said it before, for like every hundred truck spot, parking spots that they make, that they open up, 500 more trucks are on the road. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but not too much. I mean, I think it's at least a one to two ratio, so if, you know, if they make like three truck stops, or they build three new truck spots, uh, truck stops, and there's like 300 new parking spots, we have 600 new trucks on the road. It's really frustrating for those of us who uh, have been doing this a long time and have not seen things keeping up, you know? spot so is that that is also reserved how many of these are reserved thanks well there's the flying J right over there those lights no room for me there but there is room for me right at the drop site so why not just park right here and I can unload here in the morning? So right on the side of the street, lots of parking available. And hey, I don't even got to move in the morning. How's that sound? Ready to go. Felt good to get some miles behind me again. Didn't get the greatest fuel economy today because half of the day until I got close to Regina, I was fighting the wind. So that wasn't very fun, but... Now I can... go to sleep. I can actually get a pretty good sleep because my appointment's not until, uh... 10 a.m. Which I'm not sure when they get here, but... Might have to... Well, just over there, I'm not too sure. I'll figure it out before I go to bed. I'm ready for them first thing in the morning. So if you're happy that we're back to trucking, leave me a, a like and a comment down below. So don't forget, if you're in the local region here of Canada or in the US, uh, or if wherever you are, if you want to come out, there's a couple of truck shows that I'm going to be at this summer. I'd love to see you there if you can make it. Starting on June 8th, there's a Southeast Truck Show in Steinbach that I'm going to be at. Then on June 22nd, there's a Big Rig Expo in Calgary, Alberta that I'm going to be at. Then on July 26th, there's another truck show in Blumenort, Manitoba, which is five minutes away from Steinbach at PBX Truck Service, Peterbilt of Steinbach. 
I know it's in Blumenort, but Peterbilt of Steinbach is what it's called. It's Petership uh, Service Center. Uh, Peterbilt Service Center, that's where Old Blue gets all the service done. I'd love to see you there. I'm going to have my truck entered, and it's all going to be polished and shiny for it. It's going to be great. There's going to be some live music at, at uh, both the Southeast Truck Show and PBX Truck Show. A Doc Walker is headlining at the PBX Show on July 26th. Really hope you guys can make it to, to one of those events. It would be great to see you. I don't know exactly what's all going on. I'm just looking at the advertisement here. I'm going to be going uh, to Calgary on June 22nd. Uh, it's at the McMahon Stadium. It's called Big Rig Expo and Job Fair. But for the truck shows in and around Steinbach, around my area there, uh, those are working truck shows. So it's not a big like show and shine like mats or anything where there's like, you know, $2 million rigs that are everywhere all over the place. There might be a couple there. There's a couple of really nice trucks that show up. But for the most part, it's a trucker gathering, get together, working truck show. Come shine up your rig, enter it in the show, and uh, come hang out with your fellow truckers and your brothers and sisters of the highway and just enjoy a good day together with like-minded people who enjoy the same stuff that we do. Trucking and everything trucking in Southeast Manitoba. So I'll be talking about that more as the time gets closer, especially about the one on July 26th at PBX. Like I said, that's where Old Blue gets all our service done. So we'll be talking about that and the links to Old Blue very soon. Thanks again for joining me, everybody. Please leave me a like down below and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you tomorrow from right here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Keep your stick on the ice.